Every time they ask, you know, when you hear my bio I speak, I'm like, wow, is that, is that really me? <laughs> but uh, it's great to be here. I want to thank the city of Houston for putting this together and for giving the opportunity to come and, and be a part of, be a part of Complete Communities University. So I'd like to know, uh, you know, who's in, the, who's in the room here. So if we can start on, on this, if you could give me your name and, and what neighborhood and if you're a particular, a particular organization, you know, whether it's Super Neighborhood or, you know, another group that would be great. Uh, I'm Annie Harris with Acres Homes and Education. Okay, great. Can I just see what you're doing with Okay. Cindy, Sydney, Acres Homes, Engagement, Community Engagement. I'm Jana Robertson. I'm the Executive Director of Urban Harvest, and we serve 140 community gardens across the city. Oh, okay, great. Romero Fonseca. I don't live in one of the five complete communities, but I do a lot of work in the near north side, and I'm right. doing a lot of work there. Okay, great. I am Sherry Fuller, and I wanted to come because I recently chartered an alumni chapter at Texas Southern University, so I needed some pointers on one that they could need. Oh, okay. Joy Jones, Super Neighborhood 63, and Second Ward resident. Oh, okay, yeah, that's 63. That's, uh -huh. yeah. She pulled the lot in um, Gulfton, and I'm a board member of CHAPS, um, okay. Culture of Health Advancement. Okay. Silvestro Campo with ABC Dental. And I'm here filling in for Ms. Carolina Turriat. Okay. I'm John Hall. I am a, I'm a director on our HOA. I live in the, the county, though. I'm, and I'm here by way of, um, I'm in the community development uh, as my master's and my uh, professor. Sent this to me so I can come here. Hi, I'm Michelle Johnson. I'm a commercial real estate broker. I live in the third ward community, but I'm also a student at Prairie View on the Master okay. Community Development Program. Oh, okay. I'm funny, ABC Dental is one of our clients <laughs> and one of our centers, so I'm just here to learn more about the complete community. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm Edgar. I'm on the council leadership team for Super Democrat Council Number 51 and the Near North Side. Right. You were at uh, our center, Donel Castillo, maybe about a month ago, or more Esquina de Musica, um, the music. Folks want to do what? Were you there? Yeah, you had your cello. Uh, yeah, I played the cello. Yeah. Nice. Good memory. <laughs> so good. thank you all for being here. And again, I want to thank the city of Houston for, for this opportunity. So running effective meetings is this workshop. I do hope to learn uh, from you all as much as I hope to share uh, with some valuable knowledge and experience for me. But uh, this is a, you know, I'd say this is a very important part of an organization and about the work that we all do as folks that are involved in our communities. And I definitely do think it's one of the biggest challenges, you know, we have. How many of you attend meetings? <laughs> right? How many of you like attending meetings? It depends, right? It depends. right? What does it depend on? Uh, if it's an organized meeting or not, right. it depends yeah. on meeting. Yeah. Right, what else? What else does it depend on? Well, I like to receive information about the community. Yes. To know who has questions and how the questions are being asked. Right, so a lot of times meetings are good places or forums for to get information about the community <laughs> and to share. What else? Efficiency. Efficiency. If a, if a meeting is efficient, then right, you like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if they're not too long. They're not too long. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So, what is a, how would you weigh or consider the the balance of, if you will, like most of the meetings you attend, you know, over 50%, are, are they what you would like to keep attending, or are most of your, the meetings that you attend in your experience, have they not been effective, or downright have they been a waste of time? What's the experience that you all have? It's about the same. Of, about the same? About the same? I'll share a little bit about our neighborhood council meetings yeah. can be challenging because. They, they like to use parliamentary rules, which not everyone is familiar with. Robert's um, Rules of Order. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times they just go on and on. Um, I think the most frustrating thing for me is there are a lot of people who like to complain a lot, but they don't really offer any, they don't bring any solutions to the table. So that's mm -hmm. the most, that's the most, uh, probably the most uh, frustrating thing for me. Mm 
Right. Okay. And that's what make them too long. Right. Yeah. Right. That's a that's a point. So very similar to you, my experience, and I do attend a lot of meetings too, both that work and then as, as mentioned in my bio, the different organizations I'm involved in, and it's a it's a mixed bag. You know, some meetings are, you know, they're 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 great, they're energizing, you know, they're on time, they're efficient, they're effective, and other times they're not. And I always try to see what I can learn from, you know, from meetings that I attend, whether they, they go well or, or they or they don't. And again, what I you know hope to that we all here learn from one another from you know from those experiences. So again, I want to share with you what I feel over time has our, our tips, you know, and, and tools or skills for running an effective meeting. So you do have um, my copy's a little different, but there's a copy of the presentations here that you can take notes on. Just wait. And then I just brought in with me today, and it's been given out uh, a sh handout that looks like this. It's double sided, it has an agenda template on one side, and then on the other has two templates one, the uh, meeting summary, and follow up. And I'll go over those with you. And I share those with you again as tools that can hopefully help you. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if all of you or you know, some of you already have down your own uh, templates for it agendas and summaries and so forth, but I, I offer that as for my own experience. So I'm with, uh, I'm with Baker Ripley, and I want to share a little bit about uh, you know, who we are and who I am within Baker Ripley, community engagement developer, so out in the community a lot. Uh, Baker Ripley, our, our vision is that families and individuals, you know, our communities essentially, live up to their full potential. And so our mission, our work is about bringing resources connection, and education to emerging neighborhoods. Right, that's what bringing resources, connection, and education to emerging neighborhoods. And what we, what we want to do, in the sense of putting it in, like summarizing, is we essentially want to help people earn, learn, and belong. You know, we feel that everyone wants to earn a living, provide for his or her family, they have one, you know, be able to set themselves up for a better future, the children, you know, and I think we all know from from work and our own experience, that there's a, there's a great sense of satisfaction and dignity that comes from making your way in the world, right? Earning, not that we want to get to materialism per se, but you know, we know that this idea of earning or not earning, of earning, experience of earning and wanting to, it's, it's a good thing, right? So we want to help people earn. We feel that everyone desires to learn, whether it's formal education or about life or a skill, you know, so we consider people to be lifelong learners or learning should be a life, can be a lifelong process and we want to encourage that. So that's learn. And the belong, which is a lot what this is about, and complete communities and all of you that work in neighborhoods and in different organizations that we want to help strengthen people's sense of belonging, you know, and to feel like, hey, I know my neighbors, I know the super neighborhood, I'm involved in the super neighborhood, I know what's going on, you know, I know about, you know, urban harvest, and you know, yeah, there's a community garden or the urban farm down the street, or, you know, the one that's closest is over here, and I'm, I'm not connected, right? So the earn, learn, belong is what, is what we're about. Okay, so what is an effective oh, your location, excuse me. So we're we're large organization. Uh, we have several locations. We're about fifteen hundred employees, and there's parts of Baker Ripley that I'm not too familiar with. Uh, formerly we're neighborhood centers. You may know those neighborhood centers and neighborhood centers for, for many, many years. The map gives you a sense of where we're located. Where I commit to play in community engagement is in our different our six community centers. So our Closest one, Ripley House in the East End, not too far from here. Uh, we're over in Pasadena with our Cleveland campus, uh, Southeast or Greater Hobby area, like uh, McCowan Belfort, Northdale. That's our Harbach Center. And the Hillcroft 59 South area, Golden Sharpstown, our Golden Sharpstown campus. The near north side, where Super Neighbor 51 is, the Del Medica Steel Center. And then our newest center, we just had our grand opening last month is in East Alding, we're right there, like Alding Mail Route and 59 North. And that's where, in the six centers is where our community engagement team, myself included, do, do our work. Right. So what would you all consider to be an effective meeting? You know, describe it. An effective meeting is one that, you can fill in the blank, that Structure. structured, right? Is not too long, right. yeah. The information that you receive yeah, that you can use is valuable use. information, yeah. right? What else? We'll consider an effective meeting. Accord. Accord. There's a like among the people who are there, like an, there's an agreement. Okay. Anything else? So everybody is able to participate. Everybody participate. Okay. 
Inspiring. Inspiring. Okay. Results or interaction oriented. Mm -hmm. Okay. What? Anything else? Uh, together information and stuff that you need to take. Yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. So there's something you gained something from it, right? You you gained something from it. Okay. And you, uh, one more thing: an effective facilitator. Keep it moving. Right, the chair. Shut it down yeah. when it needs to be shut down. And, <laughs> right. and that can be a challenge. Yes, that can definitely be a challenge. Chart the course. Keep yeah, that can definitely, be a, course. Keep course. Yeah, that can definitely be a challenge. Right. So, <clears throat> the idea here, what I'm sharing is that if we if we prepare ourselves, the best way to have an effective meeting is to prepare ourselves to, to be able to do the things that you say are an effective meeting, the, the good things in it, and. <coughs> We can prepare a meeting by thinking of it in, in four phases. The planning, the setup, the actual running of the meeting, and then the follow-up. You know, these, these four phases to a meeting. And again, if we prepare for it, then we set ourselves up to have an effective meeting. Okay, phase one, the planning. I think arguably the most important part in preparing for an effective meeting is deciding what the goal of that meeting is. So thinking, you know, this, what do you want to take from it? When I heard like the result, what is the result that you want of that meeting? And then you plan, you plan from there, right? You know, kind of like, if, like thinking, okay, if I want to be here by 11.15, I need to leave you know, such and such place at such and such time, right? So what is the goal of meeting? And that can, be, that can be tough, you know, that can be challenging maybe sometimes, but the more, the clearer you are on what the goal is, what you want from it, then it structures the whole rest of the meeting and it keeps you focused. So I, I always try to start there with myself. If I'm running a meeting or, or I'm part of planning a meeting, is what do I want to get out of this meeting? Is it just information sharing? You know, if we're in a super neighborhood, is it going to be about the bylaws are going to be revised? Or are we going to vote on the bylaws? Or, you know, what is the goal of the meeting? Always start there. I would say that that's the number one, the number one action you can take to have an effective meeting. What is the goal? Know what the goal is, that you're clear on it, and anybody else participating in the meeting with you is clear on it, and it's that you have. So with our, our center in Pasadena, working on with a, a group of our community members, our community leaders, uh, recent, they started having a series of meetings to essentially put a coalition together, like a group of allies on a project that they're working on. So the very first meeting, when we were talking about it, you know, I said, you know, what do you think the goal of the meeting is? What do you want to get out of it? And they said, we want to, we want to make sure that at the end of the meeting, everyone who's there, like these 10 organizations, are going to, are going to support what we're doing. That is the goal of the meeting, to get them to support what we're doing. Right? We can't force them to, but that's what we want to get out of this meeting. And so then we structure the meeting in such a way that it hopefully leads to that. But they were clear on that. The purpose of this meeting is that at the end, they are going to be part of our group or support our group. Right? So they're, that's, their, that's their goal. Right? So it, it's going to, you know, they're going to share information about what the project is, you know, talk about the challenges, you know, and, and stuff. But the goal of the meeting is to get, to get everyone, everyone, ideally everyone who's in attendance to be part of the project. Does that make sense? So I think a lot of times when we get frustrated, we feel like even though there's valuable information, sometimes informa meetings can just be about information. And that might be okay for what you're working on and you need to decide that, you know, but but like you mentioned, you want results from it. And so you definitely need to be clear on what the goal is. Because we want to get away from meeting just to meet. You all have heard that expression, right? And that's a lot of times why you know, organizations don't continue or you know, the meetings don't continue, the, the alliance, the coalition doesn't continue because then people are just meeting to meet. So the, as clear as you can be on what you want out of the meeting and those planning it, that's the best. So what is the goal of the meeting? And that's also going to impact. You can start thinking about action steps. So think about this group in Pasadena, they can start thinking about, well, if our goal of the meeting is to get these people to support the project, I can already envision that such and such organization can do this to help us, right? They can do more outreach or such and such can, they can call the council member, you know, later on or, you know, such and such can help us with this. You can start thinking about that if you know what the goal, if you're clear on the goal. All right. Does that make, make sense? I would say that's the by, number one thing that you can do to have an effective meeting is to be clear on the goal and, and state and be able to state that. So you want to do homework 
you know, for the, you know, for the meeting, any research you need to do, you know, in the case of Pasadena, this project has to do with public transportation, so they need to be researching on, you know, what is the situation, you know, what, in this case, it has to do with funding. So you need to do your homework on that. And then, you know, if you're clear on the goal, the goal drives everything, then you need to know, well, I need so-and-so to attend to be part of this meeting, because if I want X, Y, and Z, then I need, you know, so-and-so to attend. I was at a meeting at, that, we, that we hosted at Ripley House uh, on Tuesday evening. It was about the Community Land Trust, a little bit about Community Land Trust getting started here in <coughs> Houston, right? And, and it was a super neighborhood, 63, and the East End Collaborative introducing the concept to people. And so, you know, in their planning, I wasn't part of the planning, but I, I know from talking to one of the members and, and seeing how the meeting played out, you know, they need to make sure, if they're gonna talk about the land trust, and the goal is that people walk out of there and they feel informed about the land trust, this was basically an information meeting, then they need to have the experts about the land trust. And who is that? So they had Tom McCaslin, you know, the city's director of housing and community development, he was there. They had, um, so there's two, as I understand it, two consultants in from out of town who are part of the advising on the community land trust. And they had two, two board members of the recently formed Houston Community Land Trust organization. And this is all fairly new to me, right? So they, these are the people that we need to attend to be part of the meeting, and then it's open to the whole community. We wanna be sure that the super neighborhood is present, we wanna be sure that X, Y, and Z is present, right? So again, based on the goal, then you can decide who needs to attend and then who your key participants are, right? And then based on that, you draft, draft the agenda. And we'll get to the templates that I have, you know, here in a, in a few more minutes. So phase one, planning the meeting. Again, I, I'm gonna keep knocking on this or uh, define your goal. Be clear on the goal of a meeting. Any thoughts on these? Any questions on this? Pretty straightforward? Okay. All right. And then the setup. So we wanna be sure we start and end on time. Uh, some of the basics, you know, sign in sheets so that we know who came and we can keep track of who's there. You know, wanna make sure that phone number and email not everybody has an email, you know, not everybody likes to give their phone, so we put the two options, you know, very basic. This should read satisfactory place, although I guess pace could also work. <laughs> <laughs> but it should be the place, right? You, yeah, you wanna have the, the right, the place has to be big enough for, for the, the right size for the people, right? If it's too big, it could, you know, not, it could, you know, could throw you off too because you may want to have like an intimate setting. If it's too small and people aren't comfortable, they don't fit, you give the impression that, hey, we weren't really thinking about you coming, right? So satisfactory place, you know, is it, you know, the, the AC or the heating, you know, is that, all, is that all working, you know, as it should for your meeting? You do want to allow time for, you know, informal time for social gathering. We always kind of built in 15 minutes, you know, to let people arrive, especially if it's a, you know, weekday evening with traffic in Houston as big as our city is. So you do want to allow for that time to get in. And then if it, if it is going to be a recurring meeting, you know, like the super neighborhood meetings, you know, other, you, know you want to make sure you're, you set that regular time. So everybody knows, okay, the third Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m., you know, it's the third ward super neighborhood meeting. You know, second ward, I believe, is still the first Monday of every month, right? 6.30, I believe, at the Ripley House Middle School, right? Okay, what I suggest personally I think meetings should not go longer than an hour and a half. That is my, that's my usual standard, that meetings should go longer than, a, than an hour and a half. You know, because then it, it, it's, you know, people's time is valuable. You know, a lot of times our, our, our meetings are on weekday evenings, you know, we're taking people away from family possibly or other commitments, you know, and, and so forth. So I, I just think an hour and a half is a pretty good standard for meeting. It, it helps you, you know, stay on focus, and so I will admit that our staff meetings at work are scheduled for two hours. You know, that's a, they turn into work meetings. That's a whole another nature. But I think, particularly like in our in our community meetings and so forth, an hour and a half I think is a good is a good. When you say a meeting is too long, how long has have they have they run? Well, I think I don't really mean. I think I'm not really talking about time. Okay. Usually, when I set up a meeting, I'll do a two-hour window. Okay. But when it's boring, when you, yes. just like the gentleman said, you have people that's arguing and they're going back and forth. And, and what, what I try to do is set a meeting up so it's interesting, you get the information, so people want to come back to the next meeting. Right. You know, right. so 
I don't really think I'm talking about, I am talking about time, but I'm talking about what you're discussing, and so one person take over the whole meeting, and yeah. you don't get to finish the agenda. Right, you know? okay, yeah. And you've probably been part of retreats or longer meetings, you know, sometimes, you know, boards will have these longer, you know, plan mm -hmm. things out. Sometimes that is needed, you know, and one thing that I do like in our staff meetings that gets built in is that we can actually take care of some things right then and there. Oh, let me send that email right now, you know, to whoever, or let me make that call right now that we were talking about, right? But I think the general thing about, you know, an hour and a half, you know, can be a, I think a good, a standard to use on that. Okay, so phase two, planning the meeting. You can keep start and end on time. And then you gotta allow for that informal time or that gathering time for people you know, to arrive and to, to build a bonds like right within members of, of the group. Okay, the actual running of the meeting. So I have the, an agenda template that, that I offer to you to use, very basic. Um, I'm sure you've prepared agendas yourself and, and maybe have your own method. But again, so if we're clear on the goal, then I think you know, everything else follows a bit more easily on it. So, you know, standards start with welcome and introductions, and that's usually handled by the meeting chair, and that can be depending on the size of the group, you know, five to 10 minutes. If it's a larger group, then you wanna keep it as, you know, your name and organization with us, you know, or, you know, who's here, any VIPs who are here, someone from the city, maybe, you know, an elected official, All right? So five to 10 minutes, you can allow for introduction. And then the body of the meeting, right, is where the, where the meet happens. Could be a recap from the last meeting, you know, if applicable. If this is the very first meeting going on, you obviously won't have a recap. And then what are the core items of this meeting? And this is where, you know, you specify, you know, you want to, in advance, when I talked about who are the key people that need to be there and plan the meeting with those key people, these are the, these will be the folks that go in these boxes. You know, so-and-so is going to be talking about the budget. So-and-so is going to talk about the bylaws. So-and-so is going to talk about the latest with the urban farm in the neighborhood, right? Or so-and-so is going to give us an update of, you know, where the city is on the community land trust, right? All the, 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 core, the, the core of the meeting is going on there. And you want to have, um, again, the, that is set up with the specific people who are supposed to talk and that you've prepared with them in advance. It may be a conversation right before the meeting starts. It may be, you know, phone conversation previously or maybe an in-person meeting. And then allow for new business, you know, that, that's probably, a, you know, one that's a, an optional, if you will, but you might, you do want to allow, especially like in super neighborhood meetings, you want to hear anything new that we didn't address here in our meeting, right? And then summarize it and action steps. I definitely, you know, feel that Meetings should not just be about information, but there's gotta be some action step. And ideally, this is very speaking ideally, everyone who's in attendance should walk away with something to do. Is it, it could be as simple as, okay, you're gonna invite one more person to come to the next meeting, right? That's your deal. Or it could be someone has a major task of, okay, you're gonna try to schedule a meeting with a council member, right? That's your task leaving here. Or you're gonna, you're gonna do X, Y, and Z, right? But everybody should leave, ideally should leave a meeting with something to do. And again, it could be as basic as, okay, you're gonna bring the refreshments to the next one. But something, right, something to do, right? It shouldn't just be, we just met to met. So summarize and action steps. And then I think all the agenda should be written and clearly stated when the next meeting is, right? It should be on the agenda already, like there at the bottom, the next meeting is, you know, on such and such day at this time and at this place, that that's on the printed agenda. So people leave with the agenda, they, they have it on there as a reminder and thank all who have attended. So again, my, similar to the fact that you wanna know what the goal is of the meeting, be clear on that. I think the other important piece is the action steps that people should leave with something to, to do. And again, if it's a big group like the super neighborhood, again, it could be that, okay, everybody's gonna bring one more person to the next <coughs> meeting, right? or if it's something related to a petition, okay, somebody's gonna, everybody's gonna get, you know, at least five people to sign it. You know, something's, they got, we got, gotta do something, right? And that's why you, I think people find meaning in having attended, you know, they feel that they're contributing and it's not just about, hey, I'm just coming to this meeting just because. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is challenging and again, it, it comes with being clear on the goal of what the meeting, the meeting is. Okay, so the agenda serves to keep us on track, you know, to watch time. When I have there on the column about uh, time, I like to put down, you know, minutes. I probably won't necessarily put like actual time, 
Like if we started at six, I, I notice we won't say, okay, 6.10, we're here, 6.15 is here. Because then I could, you know, may not all run that smoothly, throws us off, but at least put times, okay, five minutes, 10, you know, 30 minutes. And I think that, you know, at least it helps keep on track, but it also keeps people from getting antsy, probably saying, okay, it's 6.50 and we're not at this point yet, right? So you could decide, maybe that could work in your favor, but you definitely want to have some kind of uh, timeline or, or structure for time. Encourage participation. You can ask people, you know, the person who's quiet, you can ask them, you know, what, what do you think about this? You know, what's going on? Again, summarize the points raised. You as a chair particularly, you know, you want to, hear, you want to let people know that you heard them and that this is what's going to take place. And it's a good idea to, you know, rotate facilitators, you know, give people a chance, but you want to have an effective facilitator. So what needs to happen, I think, of this, if you are rotating, there needs to be a prep meeting before the, before the actual meeting. The previous facilitator talks to the one who's going to you know, be the next month, that that is set up, right? So you're helping develop you know, prep meeting. I think pre-meetings, you know, we talk about meetings to meetings to meetings, but I, it's good to have pre-meetings, especially if it's a big community gathering. Everyone needs to know his or her part, right? So there's the meeting and there's the pre-meeting, right? And as much as you can do in advance, the better, the better you are. I think a good rule, especially in a big meeting, I saw this at uh, Tuesday night at the second board meeting, they had one, when it comes to asking questions, one, two, three, and me. So if you ask a question, let at least three other people get a chance to ask before you raise your hand again or you, know, you, you ask another question. So that was, you know, especially for a large community meeting, I think that's good. So one, two, three, and me. So one, two, three, and me. That's, I, I, I think that's a good, a good piece of advice there. Okay, then the last part, the follow-up, you can turn to the back side of the sheet where the agenda is on the, agenda comes on the front side. You know, want to gather feedback, got to make sure somebody's keeping notes of the meeting, right? It's usually, you know, when you have like a super neighborhood or a very structural organization, you usually have a secretary, right, that's assigned, but somebody should be taking notes, right, of the meeting, and then it should be summarized. Here's a template you can use, you know, for that, you know, you can just fill in the, fill in the, uh, the chart there, if you will, of, what's, of what uh, the information there is. The key part is, you know, what decisions were made, right? We decided that we are going to request a meeting, you know, with our council member by such and such date, right? You know, we decided that we are going to, you know, see if this land is available for the, uh, the urban farm or the community garden, right? We are going to see if so-and-so is available to do a session on the community land trust for the community, right? So what decisions were made, list those out, and be sure to list again where the, um, what the next meeting is. And then this can be sent over email, right? You can send this over email to the participants so they know what was going on at that meeting. And then you want to, you as the chair or as the main organizer of the meeting, definitely want to keep track of the action items, right? And so got there a template that you can use for that. And you know, be very clear, very specific. You know, so and so said, so and so is going to call the, the city council member to get the meeting, and who is it, and by what date, so we can keep track, right? So and so was going to find out from Urban Harvest how much, you know, does organic soil cost? <laughs> we want to do 70 beds. How much does the organic soil cost, right? So these templates are here to, to help you keep track of that. And again, we want to, we want to um, send a summary of the national meetings to those who came to the meeting so that they know what was going on. So just as a, you know, putting the emphasis on the action stuff that everybody should leave, you know, the tough part is we got to follow up with people. And that can be, it can sometimes be uncomfortable, you know, maybe, or it just takes time. But that follow-up is important because we want to, we're sending a message that, hey, this meeting is important, what we're doing is important, and so I'm following up. And I think that's, I know myself, I sometimes let people slide on that, you know. But we definitely, we need to do this follow-up, and this is good to keep track of. So-and-so said that he or she was gonna do this, you know, do that by such and such date, right? That follow-up is key. I've got, you know, sometimes I'm better in the habit of checking in on somebody, hey, we missed you at the meeting, I hope nothing was wrong, right? We just want, you know, you could be diplomatic about it, saying, hey, you said you're gonna come, what happened, right? <laughs> right, so we're coming close to uh, the end of our time to get, because the mayor is gonna be speaking here shortly. Any questions, anything that hopefully this was helpful, maybe just maybe reinforce what you already know, and you know, confirmation is always can be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Any questions or any thoughts? Anything you feel I missed? 
Yes, ma'am. Do you have this in the electronic form? I can send it over to the, the city folks, yeah, and they can send it out to the rest of the group. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, one thing that, you know, we discussed in the other meetings is about uh, meeting the people where they are. Okay. And a lot of what we're trying to do is uh, engage the millennials as well as, you know, the, the 30 somethings, right. the 40 somethings. And the 30 somethings and the 40 somethings, those are the ones with the children. Those are the ones with going to college or whatever. So we have to be a little bit more innovative. Right with our meetings if we want to include right. everybody. And so I think that, you know, it's not it's, it's good to have to go to the meeting, but if you cannot, you still should be able to participate. Whether you're Skyping, right. whether you're on a conference call, you know, it's just that, you know, a lot of times that's why you're not getting a lot of people engaging in the community. Some people have to go home and take care of the kids. Right. You know, whatever. So I think that, and some people don't want to do it because, you know, for some reason they say this is a secret meeting and you may have, you know, other people listening or whatever. But, you know, I think in order for us to engage the next generation, we're going to have to include some of their. Right, you have to be That's true. So yes. I'm, not, I'm not very. Um, like social media tag, but I know people use Skype, you know, that mm -hmm. works on, Skype. you know, if you can do conference call, you can bring people in. The other thing, if you can, if your organization can, you can provide, you know, childcare. You know, we do that sometimes at our meetings at our different centers and food. Uh, this, this meeting again on Tuesday about the community land trust, you know, they provided food. That helps out because then people don't have to worry about that. dinner. You know, and so you, you have to definitely, definitely encourage, encourage that. And so, and then the other thing with getting people to meetings, I think it's, it's based on relationships. So as much as you can, you know, outside of the meetings, build relationships with people, you know, if somebody knows you, it's more likely they're going to they're gonna come when you call them or email them, hey, the next meeting is such and such date, you know, please come. But I do agree with you, you've got to be innovative, and using Skype or conference calls can, can help. So mm -hmm. any other thoughts or questions? And then I think we have to go over to, to the other, the big auditorium. Time is an instant, too. Uh, the, uh, what times you have your meetings and stuff, so that more people can attend. Yeah. Some people still work because in <laughs> one of the areas, um, I see that the, <laughs> the board changed the time. It was 7 o'clock, which was working kind of good. So Marty changed the time to <laughs> 6 o'clock. So that means less people are able to get there and stuff. And, I, you know, and I'm fighting with that now. You right. know? So time is the, is the essence because... Some people still do work. Right, right. So in general, if you want, if you want the community to attend, it's got to be an evening meeting. And, and what was said to me, I asked, oh, well, most of us are the time. Well, it ain't about all y'all. Y'all have other people. You know, it's right. about everybody. Mm -hmm. It's about, or mostly everybody, you know. So that's what I'm kind of No, I, I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Boliva, for sharing your knowledge and for you know, helping us to make our meetings more effective. And uh, yeah, Mayor will be giving his uh, address shortly. So, yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.